In this tutorial, we will explore how to deploy our application on a cloud hosting service called Render. To begin, let's push our code to GitHub, which has seamless integration with Render. Render offers a comprehensive range of services that are mostly free to use, including web services, static sites and cron jobs. It also provides a free managed PostgreSQL database, which unfortunately is only free for 90 days. However, we will explore some alternative free options at the end of this tutorial. To get started, let's sign up on Render, which is a straightforward process. Once signed up, we will require two things. Web services to host our Node.js applications and PostgreSQL to manage our database. We can add a new web service by connecting our GitHub account to pull our code. After allowing access to our repositories, we should see our repository on Render. We can then connect it, give it a unique name, select the region, and choose the GitHub branch we want to pull and deploy, which in this case is the main branch. If our service is nested inside a folder, we can specify that path. However, if the index file to start the server is on the root, we can enter a dot. We will also need to specify the type of web service, which in this case is node. For the build command, we will use npm install, and for the start command, we will use the command to start the server. We can use the free version, which is adequate for this application to run. To add environment variables, we can click on advanced, and for this application, we can add the secret.nv file. We can also enable automatic deployments, so when we push our code to GitHub, it deploys a new version. Render has an excellent feature where we can view all the logs from our server. After successfully deploying our application, we can access it using our publicly accessible URL. Our server is up and running, and we are returning an unknown request whenever we hit a random endpoint. Now let's set up our database. To set up the PostgreSQL database, we can click on New and select PostgreSQL. We can give our database any name, and we can choose to either create a user or let render create some random values. We can also select a region, which can be anything, but selecting a region that is near us will result in better performance as the latency will be less. After 90 days, our database will be deleted. To avoid this, we can create a new database every 89th day and modify our environment variables, allowing our application to run continuously for free. Once the database is created, it will provide the necessary values to connect to it. However, before that, we need to add two additional environment variables, the host and port number. These values can be retrieved from the environment file, which we should add in our local. Before setting up our service, we should attempt to connect to the database using the Table Plus application. This way, we can create the initial tables required for our application. If you require assistance with setting up PostgreSQL in your local environment, please refer to the link in the description. Clicking on the New Connection button, we can select PostgreSQL and assign any name. We should copy the values from Render and paste them in the relevant fields. For the host, we need an externally accessible URL, while we can use internal values for our service, since the database and service are hosted together. The public URL will contain all the information required, essentially serving as a connection string. Let's take the host address for now. Let us add the username, password and database name. By clicking Test, we can verify that everything is working correctly. We can now connect to our production database. We should export the schema structure we require for our application from our local database first. By selecting all the tables we need and right-clicking, we can export them as an SQL file, which provides additional options. We can choose to drop the tables if they already exist. Now let us go to our production database, click the Import button in the top menu, and select SQL Dump. We should choose the file we previously exported. If we refresh the page, we should see all the tables and their values. Let us remove the test table. 
we can now create an environment file on our server to connect to the database. Going to our dashboard and selecting the web service we created earlier, we should select the environment and click on Add Secret File. The file name should be Envy, and we should paste all the key value pairs in the content field. Let us change the values in the server according to the new database values, click Done, and save the changes. Finally, let us do one manual deployment to update the values. Let's update the URL for our bot hook to connect to the new web service. Let's test it out and keep our fingers crossed. Unfortunately, it failed. As expected, not everything runs smoothly in the software industry. Let's debug it using our logs. Based on the logs, there seems to be an issue with our handle message method in Telegram JJ's on line 17. We also notice that we're not passing the message object when sending a message to the Telegram bot on line 40. Additionally, we need to change the condition from AND to OR since we're receiving a message from our chat. Since we made changes to our repository, we need to push the latest changes to deploy the new code. We can now test the end-to-end -end functionality starting with the login URL. If everything works correctly, we should be able to see the redirect URI using our web server URL. We can obtain the login URL and select the account. If it still redirects to localhost instead of our web service, we can fix this by adding our new web service URL with the same endpoint G token in the Google Developer Console's API and services. We can download the latest JSON file and update the config.doi JSON file with the new values. We then converted the array of redirect URIs to an object and assigned the values to prod and dev keys. Now let's update our code to pick the correct redirect URI based on the environment it's running. We also added a new variable called nv in the Dante nv file and set its value to dev to indicate that it's a development environment. This way, it will pick the redirect URI value based on our environment file. We updated the config doi json with these new values and pushed our code to GitHub. Also, let's add this new variable inside the render. Let's test it out again. We can see the redirect URI using our web server URL. The token was updated in our production database and we tried the surprise, which was pulling a random photo from our Google Photos. It worked great. Let us consider some tips and suggestions to enhance the performance of this application. To begin with, it is essential to keep in mind that the database will expire in 90 days. Therefore, it is advisable to create a new database every 89th day and update the table's schema and environment variables. Another option is to use the Vercel serverless Postgre, which provides a free database. However, since it is a serverless option, we must modify our database implementation to match the new setup. Alternatively, we can opt for Firebase Firestore, a NoSQL database with a total size of 1 GB, which is also free. Furthermore, to make this bot more interesting, we can incorporate cron jobs, which are essentially task schedulers that can be set up to execute a task when a timer ends. These timers can also be repeated. Although we can use cron jobs in render, it is not entirely free. The best free alternative is cron-job.org, a free website. Tip hash 1. 
Refresh Token Refresher As mentioned earlier, the Refresh Token that we receive will expire in seven days. We can publish our application in the Google Developer Console and this will ensure that our Refresh Token remains valid for a longer duration. However, publishing the app requires us to send a video recording of our application explaining why we collect user photo information, its safety measures and other relevant details. Alternatively, we suggest setting up a cron job that runs every day and hits an API on our server. We then check for our refresh token, created on date. If the date is greater than six days, we obtain a new login URL and send it to our personal chat. Tip hash 2. Reliving old memories. Social media platforms like Facebook often display memories from past years on the current day. Similarly, we can share a photo in a group of friends that was taken on the same day, but in a previous year. It's a beautiful way to relive and cherish those precious moments. To achieve this, we can use the update media method to update all image IDs and save the date and month of when each photo was taken using Google API information. We can then set up a daily cron job that hits a specific endpoint on our server. When we receive this GET request, we will check if any photos month and date match the current month and date. If they do, we will send that photo to our group. Tip hash 3. Sending wishes. Create a new table to save the birthdays or anniversaries of our friends. Set up a daily cron job to check for any celebrations on the current day. If any such celebration is found, we can use the ChatGPT API to generate a good wishing message. Then we can post the message in the group. Thank you for being a part of the entire journey. I'm thrilled to meet you again for a new project.